ratio is a little bit higher um, on those particular hooks for me, so that's what I stick to. So um, we would use a, a six aught or a three aught thread. I you know I use the six aught just lets me get a few more wraps in there. It's usually pretty thick. So first thing that we're going to do is we'll just attach the thread on there. I like to wrap it about three quarters to the back of the hook there. So this is when I use that, uh, it's a UV black eye stub. You could also use a peacock, he just usually works pretty good too. I find that there's no need to really have to do it on like a dubbing loop because you want it to get a little a little furry as you fish it. You know, fish chew on it, you want to kind of fur out. Um, I'm one of those guys I just kind of hand dub it on. Just a simple finger twist. You could also use like a shiny chenille as an underbelly also works pretty well. Now notice I kind of wrap it up to where the leg segments would be. Um, the reason why I'm doing it there is because it's something to glue the foam down onto as you go. Next, I'm taking a two millimeter foam. Um, if you didn't, if you weren't at the meeting that I did earlier this year, uh, I I cut all my foam with uh, a paper cutter to get a nice straight line. Cut it into strips. Just kind of saves time later. So um, I also do take an adhesive, and sometimes I'll I'll double layer it together. Adhesive two big pieces, and then as you cut it, you get that nice smooth smooth edge. So that's a brown to black. Um, works well for ants for cicadas also too. You see variations. Some guys tie their cicadas only in brown. You know, I I prefer the black. That's kind of more the natural color. Um, they do have kind of a smoky look to the body, so you'll see I'll cut the tail to the taper and kind of a long taper to it. And then the next move I do is I actually kind of trim it out a little bit, make it kind of a boat boat shape. Now, not, not a true necessary factor to it, but I always hit mine with a little lighter. That kind of melts the foam a little bit, kind of rounds it out, seals everything. So the next move, notice I'm hanging it just off the tail, right? First wrap is usually pretty light, getting tighter as I pull. So you always want that little bit of extra in front of the head because we actually pull the head over on this fly. Get that kind of rounded. Yeah, so you'll see that the the head kind of sticks out in front a little bit right there. Now you'll notice that once we have it attached like that, it wants to swivel on top. That's when I take the super glue. I pull it up in the back, put a little bit of glue on top of the dubbing, and just pin it down. Dave wanted me to show you the tattoo. Heavy <laughs> 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 alcohol involved. Yeah, somewhat. 
<laughs> Might have been some Crown Royal mixed in there somewhere. So on the under wing, you're just extending it just past the body about a quarter inch. The cicadas have a, a very noticeable longer wing than the body. Um, a black under under with that you can kind of see has almost like a veiny look to it. Usually just two or three wraps will, will do. Steve Ferrar blend, yeah. Yeah, so again, you find it where the, uh, the streamer stuff would be. You know, it's a streamer fiber, but I use it as an underwing. It's, it's not, not buoyant, it doesn't absorb water, and it's synthetic, so usually works pretty good for an underwing. It's really durable. They'll eat all the deer hair off this thing, and the, all that'll be left will be that black Ferrar blend, so. Now, just because I'm a guide, I put every step is like a little more super glue. Want them to last all day, so so that's the underwing. The top wing is a, a dun-colored deer hair. Traditionally, you also see them tied with a white calf's tail. Um, we get all sorts. Every guide has a different way to do it, but uh, mine I like the dun-colored wing because when you look at the wings, they have that black vein through them. They almost have like a, a dun-colored tint to them and surprisingly this stands out pretty good on the water. You can see that that done a little better than you can say a black. So just kind of picking out that under fur. You can use white, black, I've seen guys use olive. I think olive is a little bit harder to see but You'll also notice that I will put an indicator on this fly too, so. That was a man down. Let's try it again. I was on film too. I know. I'm only one cup of coffee into my day, Dave. <laughs> it's after the third cup I really do my work. <laughs> So again, I'm just extending it out to the same length as the Farrar blend. Pretty close to the end there. Nice soft wrap. And I'm pulling a little bit tighter and that'll make it splay out when I let go of it. You want to get all those little pieces out of the front because when you fold it over for the head, if you have extra pieces there, it's going to want to, you know, incorporate into the head, which is a little harder to deal with later. So, again, a little dab of super glue. Let that dry. Next I'll be uh, taking the pumpkin silicone legs. Now this is where it can vary from season, you know, parts of the season. If it was early in the hatch, I might be using more of a yellow or a chartreuse silicone leg right there. The pumpkin always has that kind of little bit of orange flash to it. It's nice variegated to it. 
And the reason why I do two different types of legs in this fly is because I want some of them to move stiffly and some of them to move softly. When they hit the water, those things are just kicking for life. That's all they're doing is just continually moving. And so you want them, you want them to, you know, the legs to actually move. So a big mistake people make on these things is that they trim those legs way too short. The natural bug, the legs kind of cup underneath. And honestly, for the fly, I've tried to tie them like that using a, um, a paintbrush and like a horsehair for, from a paintbrush. And they're just so stiff that you don't get the motion out of them. They like those legs kicking. They like them moving. So you'll notice what I do is I take two sections together. Place them right to the side of the fly and I usually pin them with my finger right up against the foam. One soft wrap and the nice thing about rubber legs is you can kind of adjust them as you go. And the second wrap and they'll kind of pop off to the side like that. other side here. Again a good measure is just to kind of make it similar to the length of the body and then you could always trim it down. Next I'm going to incorporate the, the orange round rubber leg. And what you're doing is you're just kind of splitting the upright. So if you look at the fly like that, you see it? Yeah, so when you put the leg right in the middle, it kind of has a, the uprights to kind of hold it. Something like that. Again, just putting the rubber leg between the two, two sets of silicone legs. I usually find it right in the middle. Cut your light off on this first one here. Okay. Your time. Cut okay. yours off too. So you notice you get that kind of X, X shape to the legs. Once they're all in, you can usually pull it a little bit tighter. And that'll kind of splay it out a little bit more. Just a little light trimming just to make the thread wraps easier. Okay, and then the next thing you want to do is you're going to fold the head over. When you rewrap it, you want to put the thread wraps just in front of the front legs. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'll pull that head over and I'll pin it down. I usually pull the legs back to keep them out of the way, like that. Just a nice light wrap in front, pulling a little bit tighter as we go. that nice round head to it. And you 
just want to trim up the extra foam there. this. And then the last step is I just attach an indicator. It could be orange foam, but whatever color you see the best. So white, the fish don't really see it because of the silhouette of the bug. There's so much wing and leg there that they don't necessarily see that top foam. But you want, you want to have something that you know the fly is upright, you know, whether you have to mend it or give a little rod shake just to try to get it to flip over, it'll usually self right. But every once in a while, if they land upside down and the fish don't see the, the underbelly, they see a lot of wing on top, they don't really want, they'll, that's when they're refusing. So this is a little bit narrower then the black foam. I'm just placing that on top. Again, I'll pull the legs back. I usually do it a little bit longer than where I trimmed off the excess. One, two. Trim it with maybe a little, about an eighth of an inch from the thread wraps and that keeps the line from getting stuck underneath it as you cast it. And then that's pretty much it. You'll notice also when I go to tie this off, I'll pull that head back with my thumb, put some thread wraps underneath. Just a simple whip finish around the eye. do two of them. And then before I glue everything down I just kind of adjust the legs so everything's sitting off to the side here. glue over the eye and where I did my thread wraps and that's pretty much it minus just kind of trimming down the legs at the end again on a size 10 Materials. Well, say hi to Mickey for me. I will. <laughs> and Sam. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to see Sam today. Yeah, he's there. I've known, I've known Mickey Anderson since I was about five years old. So He's a good guy. My dad was the head guide for anglers and before they went out of business. And Gene Snow, all those guys, those guys were the guys that taught me. All right, so the Lincoln log, again, it's a size 10 hook. Um, you can use brown or black. You can get away with black. I'm tying it with black. Again, it's the same look as far as attaching the thread. We want it three quarters of the way back on the end of the shank. The next move is to kind of size up your body. So notice the reason why I buy these big ones is because you can make bigger smaller. You can't make smaller bigger. So I always go go the big ones. Usually what I do to kind of size it up is I take the eye of the hook and I match it even with the brown to white line. Okay. As far as the length, you can see where my finger is. Again, it's probably plus a quarter inch off the end of the hook. Usually to kind of do that, to measure it out, 
if you just pinch down on that body, it'll show you the little grooves on where you want to trim it. I trim it to a real simple point just to make it a little more ant body shape. And again, I hit it with a little lighter, round out that body just a little bit. Again, it's, you know, the lighter is not a necessary process. It just kind of rounds it out a little bit more versus, you know, having those clear cut edges. It kind of rounds it out a little bit. It's not sealing anything that's going to absorb water or anything. So Probably makes it a little more durable too. I, I would think so, yeah. Yep. Um, this Lincoln log, this, this fly works well for us in the fall, um, late summer, fall. I've also fished it during the cicadas in black, slender bodied. Sometimes like they get so used to seeing that thicker bodied bug that it eventually just that silhouette legs coming over them works pretty well. It also works great in brown as a crane fly pattern. So it's kind of one of my go-to if I see crane flies on the water, just a leggy ant, whether it be a Chernobyl or, or a, a sailor ant style the reason why they call it sailor ant is because it has the white top, almost like the sailor's cap. So you can see I have it extended off the end of the body. That was, you know, and then we had higher water flows. That's when we see them. So the last few years we've had a, a little higher water. We see quite a few of them. Um, I tell you where there is a ton of them is at Jones Hole. There is a ton of crane fly. And so that's kind of one of my go-to patterns. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the bug of Fat Albert, but a Fat Albert's another really good, it looks like a grasshopper, but boy, they like it during crane flies too. It's just the, the kicking legs. You want those longer legs on them. Plus, every time you catch a fish on, you say, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> 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 yeah. You catch a fish of Fat Albert, the, the, the uh, actual person, Fat Albert, was a, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> that was the same. Yeah, he's a bad word now. Yep. <laughs> okay, so again, I'm just kind of getting the, this is the pumpkin color legs. You see, I got them a little bit wet, and they want to stick together. It helps kind of keep them together as you tie them. I usually measure it to the end of the point. Simple wrap. The trim. <laughs> I'll try as much as I can, Dave. So again, you see you have that kind of double splayed leg. The next thing I do is I'm attaching an oversized hackle, whether it be a, a brown grizzly, brown work. Um, I like the grizzly just because it adds a little more segmentation to it. I usually strip it. Give myself a little quarter inch piece.
attach it. Not a necessary part, but you can put a little tiny dab of super glue in there. And I'm just wrapping this in between all those rubber legs. Did you super glue the log to the book? I have not yet. So that's why you see it spinning a little bit. Usually just a couple wraps with the hackle. Notice how I made it around twice. Holding the hackle. And I'll strip it again. So when I bring it all the way around, We'll have this nice unfeathered piece to tie onto. I pull it up and I wrap that around the hook right in the middle. Then you can bring the thread right over the top and you're usually in pretty good shape. So basically, you know, that's the back end of the bug. The front end's gonna be the same, same exact segments. It's gonna be legs, then hackle. I bring it forward, just like the cicada until I have about a quarter inch left. I tie it down. And you have quite a bit of eye exposure on this hook, on this fly. That's okay. You want it to, to sit up a little bit like that. It's okay to have that nice long head on it. If you can't see that head on that fly, a fish will eat it, you, you'll never see it. It's a low riding bug. Um, one of the last moves I do on this is I actually trim the hackles flat on the bottom just to keep it from flipping over. So just kind of keel it out. So again, I'm just going to do some leg segments here. And this is basically the same way I tie a Chernobyl ant, just minus the, the hackle. It'd be more on a, on a square body, just like the cicada, just a strip of foam. There's only about 3,000 ways to tie a Chernobyl ant. <laughs> There's only about 3,000 guys that invented the Chernobyl ant, yeah. too. <laughs> I stick by the one I know, Emmett Heath, we call him the Dean of the Green, he was 1996 fly rod and reel guy to the year. And there's stories about him and a guy named Alan Woolley, Alan Woolley works for Western Rivers Fly Fisher in Salt Lake and um, that's right, really nice guy and the, the story was is that they, but you don't get him near your crown oil. no you don't. <laughs> Um, the story was is that you know him and Emma were trying to tie larger attractor patterns and and Alan came up with the Chernobyl and Emmett kind of made the comment of oh that looks like it's from Chernobyl. And that's, you know. I know. Yeah, well, they're all good friends though. Those guys are. Did Alan actually start the Chernobyl? I would say Alan Alan Woolley was the first guy to my knowledge, and Jack Dennis and Emmett. Yeah, there's a, Jack Dennis has a spot on the B section that we call Jack's Stack, which was a, 
a uh, cover shop for a mid '90s um, fly rod uh, and real magazine cover. And it's Emmett Heath up on top of a cliff, spotting fish for Jack Dennis, and Jack Dennis is down below. It's really cool shot. Really cool shot. So again, I have that strip tackle. Bring it around once. Strip it down. Bring it all the way around. Now here's a different way to tie it off. You could actually take that strip piece of hackle and wrap the line right around it. Do so they do that same hackle trick that you're doing right there with uh, the triple double? Yes. That would make that a little easier to tie. Yes, which is a really tough fly to tie, but you saw how I just kind of wound them together. I wrap it back. Yeah, I'd say that's the ticket to not getting too thick on the triple double. It's just kind of just winding them around each other. I pull the head back. Yep. Yeah, I'm a big. I I pretty much only use saddle hackles. I like the saddle hackle. I should say I use saddle hackles for all my big guys. When you get down to that smaller stuff, that's when you break out the gauge and you know you want to use more of a cape. But trim that flat again. Just kind of get the legs so they're all similar length. And then the last move on this one, notice how that hackles down low. Because I just trim it flat right along the bottom. And that keeps it from flipping over. And if you want to, you could always add a little bit of glue over the knot at the end. And that's your Lincoln log. Mm -hmm. Alright, so last fly I'm going to do today is, uh, we call it the Jimmer Beetle. This fly is kind of special to me because it was a variation on a few different bugs. I always went through trying different beetle patterns. Um, you know, beetles are one of those things. There's there's more styles of beetles than any other terrestrial in the world. Different shapes, different sizes. It's amazing to me as I float down a river that I've guided for 17 years. You know, you look on a bush and you see a totally different beetle. So for me, it was all about shape, you know, silhouette again. Um, I did also notice that a lot of them had some sort of sheen to them, um, a natural sheen, whether it, even if it was a brown, it was a little bit shiny. Um, a few years back, I ran into this material called loco foam. Uh, one of the more consistent places I found it is literally in Cabela's, Cabela's catalog. They have it in their fly time catalog. I've seen it on a number of uh, websites and whatnot. Sometimes it's hard to find around town. Um, I've also seen it. Uh, oh, is it, you get your finger over the ZNL? Yeah. Yeah, okay. loco foam. So it's a Mets product. Um, I've also seen Orvis make one too that they call like crazy foam. It just has that laminate sheen to it. So I, I prefer the olive, um, which is kind of black foam with the, with the green sheen to it. Um, another one I use is called the Oil Slick. Oil Slick, you can see it's just, you know, real shiny, but it's black, black foam. And then I also tie it in a bronze. Um, they have black with a bronze sheen to it. Um, interesting thing about this fly, the, the very first time I fished this thing, I had kind of gone through a day on the C section and, and tried a few different bugs and had limited success. And it was one of those days where I don't think anything was necessarily on fire. And you just try to flip through and keep things rolling. And we're floating down three guides and 
and I was in the back of the boat sitting down and up against a cliff wall I see a small rise and I tell the guy in front you know go ahead and cast that that's your fish and he had it kind of wrapped around his feet and he says oh, I don't I'm tangled that was a dink anyway and I threw it up against that cliff and it rolled down about 10 feet and I saw just the littlest rise and I set the hook on it and about fell out of my seat because I'm sitting down with my feet up on the gunnel, which is not your premium fishing position. <laughs> you know? And uh, starts fighting, and I feel it bogged down pretty heavy. And the rower says, do you have a nice one on? And I said, well, I think it's a decent fish, but I think I have it foul hooked just by how it was fighting. Well, apparently those words in order cause a 29-inch brown trout to go airborne about six times. So I end up landing the nicest brown trout I ever have on this particular fly the very first day I fished it, which at that point you you got confidence. <laughs> I'm, I'm sold. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but again, it works well. The other time this fly works well is if you see a lot of black black flies, like house flies, um, because they have that natural sheen to them. You know, and this you'll notice on this one, it just kind of has a little different silhouette to it. So this this is the Jimmer Beetle. So I start out with a size 12 hook, a little bit smaller. I tie it right back about to the barb of the hook. I then take that piece of foam that I gave you guys with a little bit of green sheen to it and I face it upwards because I'm gonna eventually pull this over so you get the green on the underbelly, okay? I started in the back and I only do about a quarter, or sorry, an eighth of an inch and kind of tie it down and I try to wrap over that foam secure it in there and it's okay if you get that little knob in it and I actually like to thicken up the body because this is almost going to be like a vein underneath it stands out a little bit um, I'm using a 6 out. you could use a 3 out on this one too or a 210 denier that'll help build up that body a little bit if you have the thicker thread Okay, so you'll notice one thing on this fly is there's a lot of exposed hook. And that's just kind of how it ends up. So first thing I'll do is I have that on there, then I wrap this thread forward almost to the same position that I did the cicada head. It's the same exact head as, as we did on the cicada. I'm pulling it forward, loose wrap, a little tighter, a little tighter, a little tighter. Then you get that nice green sheen to the to the belly of it. It's nice and rounded too. Yep, nice round shape to it. Okay, the next one on this one, this is what I'm using the a black rubber leg, round rubber leg. Just a single section like that. First thing that we're doing is we're actually knotting the leg to get that kind of grasshopper kicking leg to it. Just a simple overhand knot. You want to pull it fairly tight and that'll get that L shape kicking to it. Again, always okay to go a little bit long. You can trim those down. I'll do that knot that I just tied and I put it right on the end of the hook right there. Right where you see the end of the foam. Couple loose wraps, couple tight wraps. And you see it kicks off to the side. Okay. 
Now, if you don't glue it, you could always shorten it up just by literally stretching that foam and kind of, or that rubber leg and kind of pulling it towards you. Doing the same on the other side, just a simple knot. And I usually pin the other one that I tied down to the body and try to match them up so you get the same length on them. Again, you could always kind of pull them, slide them back and forth before you glue it. That will get you similar lengths on the... Now if you find that your rubber leg wants to, the kicker leg wants to kick up, you, you can literally just spin that twist it and pull it back and forth until you get it to sit where you want it to. Okay, the next move on this fly is just like the cicada. I'll pin the legs back and I'll fold over that head so it's the same length as the eye of the hook. Couple loose wraps, couple tight wraps. And I leave that piece long until I'm almost done with it. The next thing on this fly, and kind of unique to this particular bug, is to actually put an antenna on there. The antenna, I'm just taking two pieces of round rubber leg putting them together, getting them a little bit wet so they want to stay together. And I place it right in the middle of that head. Follow the same wrap pattern as you did for the head. And then once they're on there, you can actually splay them apart a little bit. So you get kind of that rubber leg look. And you want to trim them down. Still want it, you know, a little, I'd say a little bit longer than the actual legs out the side. That's all about silhouette, just a little bit different. Notice on this bug so far, I put no super glue on it. I do all the super gluing on this one at the end. I'm then taking the indicator, just like the cicada, a little bit narrower than the, the thick part of the green foam, and I place it right over the top of where those antenna are. Loose wrap, a little tighter, a little tighter. Now on this particular bug, you can actually get away with a little bit bigger indicator off the back. And I usually try to taper it. Square shapes are something that I, I think fish notice. So anytime you can round it out, or point it out, it's probably a better move. Okay. Now the last move on this one, this is what's kind of unique to this one, is I have that foam hanging out the back. And what I try to do is I pin it down and I just give it a nice sharp cut like that. Do the same on the opposite side. That's probably a little long still. But what I want this, the point of that point to hit is right down where the hook meets the other piece of foam. So see that? You want it to fold right down into there. 
and put this is when you start super gluing it. Put a little bit of glue, you pull it up, put a little bit of glue on that middle part, push it down. And you get that beetle shape. I've also done where I've ran some antron between those two layers and hung it out maybe a quarter inch. If you look at a flying beetle, a lot of them extend, extend their wings and then pull them back in. And so that antron looks more like the wing case coming back in. And again, I just kind of flip it over just like the cicada. I'll pull that head back couple simple wraps tie it off trim the legs and that's pretty much it you could always put a little bit of glue on the underside just to keep it all together nice thing about that one is it is all foam so it's, it's all foam so there's not really much that's going to sink it it's a high riding fly too